My name is Tyler Leiprint of Michigan Sky Media and I'm the photographer who took the Rose Bowl photo at the Rose Bowl in California on January 1st, 2023 with Michigan and Alabama playing. And you might have seen that photo floating around, but this is the behind the scenes story on how that happened. Keep, keep tipping, all right. Tip, you can go a little farther. I don't see him yet, I don't see him yet. Okay, hold it, hold it right here, hold it right here. So this photo has been in the making for about five years. Uh, five years ago is when I saw a similar photo of the Rose Bowl with the B-2 bomber. And once I saw that photo, I knew that some way, somehow, I had to capture that. So my number one problem going into this is how am I gonna get above the B-2 bomber? Um, typically when I take photos of flyovers, I have connections to the media and I get in contact with the pilots that are performing the flyovers. And for the most part, they are thrilled that I'm gonna be above them taking pictures. It's a keepsake for them, really. And so they're just excited. And so my first step was, well, let me call Whiteman Air Force Base and see if I can talk to the pilots. So that day I get on the phone, I call Whiteman Air Force Base, and the guy on the other line says, uh, you can't do that. And I'm, I said, what do you mean I can't do that? He says, there's no way that we're gonna coordinate with you and um, let you take that kind of photo. And I'm like, well, if you go on Google, you can see 20 pictures just like this. I want to be that guy that takes that photo and I'd love to work with you and I'll give you the rights to the photo after I take it. And uh, he said that he would leave it to his sergeant, but his sergeant's probably not calling me back. So I was really bummed at that point, um, but I knew that it wasn't illegal for me to take the photo. Um, as I've mentioned in previous videos, there's a temporary flight restriction around big games like that. Typically, they're five miles horizontally and 3,000 feet vertically. And those TFRs come out by the FAA and they're gonna come out days before the Rose Bowl. So um, even though I was planning, I had about a month to plan this trip, I wasn't gonna find out what that exact TFR was until days before. So I'm putting time and money buying uh, flights out there to do something that I don't even know 100% if I can do. Uh, so step two of this was to call a helicopter company, uh, someone that would work with me. So I got connected with Orbic Air out of Burbank, California, and they did say that, yes, we can do this. We can pull the permits if we need any and uh, talk to air traffic control. So in the meantime, I reached out to my younger brother who was in the Air Force, and I said, hey man, I got an open seat in the helicopter. Would you wanna come up to California and be a part of this Rose Bowl experience with me. Uh, he lives in Florida now, but he actually was in Los Angeles for four years uh, serving in the military. So he knew the area and I knew that he could definitely help me out. So he of course said, yes, I'm in. And so we began to plan our trip and just prepare for the biggest shot of my life. So January 1st, 2024 is here and my brother and I are in California and we decided to go to the beach and, and mess around. We actually got to do some body surfing, which was just incredible to get refreshed um, because at that point I was nervous. You know, I had a big day ahead of me. And so getting in the ocean and just body surfing took that away. And so after breakfast and packing, we got in the rental car and we headed to the airport. And um, this was probably the most nervous that I've been for a shot in my entire life. Um, all said and done, I think I spent over $8,000 just to get out there, um, just to have a chance. And again, that's not a guarantee, that's a chance at taking this photo. We just got to Orbic Air, anything you wanna say? Let's do this, man. I'm, I'm stoked for this. I think it's gonna be pretty incredible. Perfect day, perfect weather. What it feels like 70 degrees out right now. Yeah. Couldn't be better. Are you nervous at all? Yeah, I'm, first, I'm a, I'm a first flight. Bit, yeah, it's my first helicopter flight, so I'm a little bit nervous, but I think I'm up for it. Heck yeah, let's go. <laughs> Orbic Air, go blue. They know what's up. <laughs> and so we finally get to the airport, and uh, I'm talking to the pilot, and he says to me, we just got authorization from air traffic control that we're good to go. And I'm like, 
wait, what'd you just say? He says, yeah, we're, we're good to go. I just found out this morning. This whole time, 30 days before that, they had been telling me that they think they can do it, no problem. They talked to air traffic control. Um, but it wasn't until the day of that we actually got the approval to fly above the B-2 bomber and the TFR. <laughs> and this whole time I'm thinking that 30 days beforehand, like we're good to go. But no, it wasn't until the very morning of, and that just was like a bullet to the heart. You know, like I can't believe that I came all this way and I'm here right now. And we finally just now got the approval. And so now all that's left is to capture the most iconic shot in Michigan football. And so we took off in the helicopter and actually that was my brother's very first helicopter ride with the door open, hanging out with a very expensive camera. And he's also not a photographer or a videographer. So that was his very first time holding a camera like that. And so I got the settings for him, hit record, and I said, just hold it steady. That's all you gotta do. Awesome, do it. Hey, we'd like a departure to the east. Uh, if we can get a hand off to SoCal afterwards, we have information, Victor. We are at Atlantic. Hello, one, zero, three, one, one, five, six, six, six. Clear to go, one, five, hello, one, oh, three. Southwest 1659, contact SoCal departure. Good day, South 1659. And so we get above the stadium and we coordinate with the pilot a little bit, just going over our route, where we're gonna be, what's the best angle that we wanna be at. And because the B-2 bomber's coming from the left and the pilot's on the right side of the aircraft, he can't see the field. And so I have to give him verbal directions on where to go. And, and, th and this is very hard because um, for me to see the B-2 bomber, I kinda have to turn my head and look backwards but the field is below me. And so I'm trying to find the B-2 bomber. I'm trying to tell the pilot where to go. I'm making sure my camera, you know, doesn't do anything stupid and the settings don't get changed or bump the settings. And so uh, we hear on the radio that the bomber is gonna be three minutes late for some reason. Approach, we're gonna say Def-12 is gonna be pushing in approximately three minutes. This is a great spot right here. Yeah. Uh, I think he's coming. I think he's coming now. Yeah, he might be coming, but we have, he's way over the mountaintop, so just, uh, I'll keep talking to you here. You want me pointed down with this, Tyler, right? Yeah, point it okay. down. All right, um, if you just want to slowly tip that way. We're on tip left? Yep, tip left, just slowly. I gotta keep, I gotta find them here. Finally, the B-2 bomber makes us descent down the mountains. And that's the hardest thing about this whole trip was, uh, the B-2 bomber's hard to see. You know, when, when you can't see it in the sky and it's down and I'm above it, it just blends into its surroundings. And at some points, during that descent of the B-2 bomber, I could see the shadow, and the shadow is a very dark black color on the ground, uh, but the bomber is just this light gray, and that was a lot harder to pick up. And at some point during the descent of the B-2, I lost track of it, didn't know where it was, and so I started randomly taking pictures of the field because I honestly didn't know where it was. Finally, my brother and I pick it up and we're getting a little too close to the field with how much time left the, the bomber has. And so I tell my pilot like, hey, go to the right just a little bit. And literally two seconds after he goes to the right, it's like, okay, now back to the left. Keep tipping, all right. Tip, you can go a little farther. I don't see him yet, I don't see him yet. Okay, hold it, hold it right here, hold it right here. Hold it right here. 
Okay, I see him. Yeah, go back to the right. This is a hat. Sack. All right, tip it, tip it down. Stay right here, stay right here. Oh, right there, right there. Right there, yeah, go to the left a little bit again. Right there. And I can just remember the feeling that I had. It was like a ton of bricks that was on my heart. And after I held the trigger back and I was leaning over, I come back like this and just take a deep breath. <laughs> and if you look at my eyes, it just, it looks funny like, you know, I just can't believe what happened. I was just so focused for the last five minutes. And I got this shot. I got the shot that I went there for. I got the shot that I spent $8,000 to get. And that feeling is nothing like I've ever experienced before. Um, just knowing that I was able to do that on my number one bucket list photo on Michigan that I've been following for the last two years. Uh, the iconic Rose Bowl with my brother. It was his first helicopter ride with the doors off and uh, that photo will, will be remembered forever. And at this point, it has over 50 million views online. And so we get back to the airport, get in the car, and we have a 20 minute drive to the stadium because we have tickets to the game and we're just, we're jacked. So in the car, I'm making the edits, airdrop it to my phone, we get to the game. We have to walk like two miles because we're so late. Yeah, you guys are probably wondering if we got the shot or not. Hey. Did we get the shot? Oh, we got the shot. Dude, he got the shot. We got the shot, man. We're heading back to the Rose Bowl right now. We got a 25 minute walk. So we're trying to bust it as fast as we can to get inside the game at 7-7 right now. Got the photo edited on the way. Stay tuned guys, it's about to come out. And we get in the game and once we get there, Michigan had a awesome play. I'm not sure what happened, but the, the crowd was going nuts. And so we walk into this bowl that has 95,000 people into it. And I just couldn't believe that we were above it. Now we're in the most iconic game uh, ever. Part of taking photos like this is trying to get them out as fast as possible during the game. Because typically ESPN is, is sharing different parts of the game, highlights, and so I wanna get it out as soon as I can so people at halftime can see it and hopefully go viral. So at the game, again, there's 90,000 people there. I look at my phone, I have no service whatsoever. So how am I gonna get this photo out to social media? Uh, my brother has one bar, so I hop on his hotspot and post uh, Facebook and Instagram. So after I got it posted to Facebook and Instagram, um, at every timeout or media timeout, I'd refresh my phone and that's when I saw ESPN say, hey, can we share this photo? And I knew it was on right then and there. But at that point, uh, Michigan was playing awful in the second half. And I was really worried. I was excited that my photo was gonna be shared by ESPN, but Michigan, I really need Michigan to win this game for this photo to go absolutely viral. And of course, the game goes into overtime. And the very last play Alabama has in overtime, Michigan stuffs them, Michigan wins the game. And 
Everything that I have spent the last month doing, actually the last couple years of shooting flyovers has paid off as this is the biggest photo that I've ever taken.